Hello and welcome. I am Yvette Cabasa, Pediatric Reimbursement Education Specialist for the Healthy Steps National Office. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for our fourth and final segment of the review of the California Healthy Steps Billing and Coding Guide, where the dyadic benefit and the community health worker benefit will be examined. As explained in the first segment of the guide's review, the presentation of the guide's entire content is divided into four segments, with some were divided into subsections. In the first segment, we embarked on a journey filled with navigating through coding, billing, and documentation requirements for Healthy Steps Aligned Services by traveling on the California Billing and Coding Guides Information Highway, where the journey ended with the review of smoking and tobacco use cessation. In the second segment, we continued in our travels and journeyed on Psychotherapy Road, where we learned about the different psychotherapy services open for Medi-Cal reimbursement. There we explored the various session types and categories of patient medical necessity. We also reviewed the service coding billing and documentation guidelines. In the third segment, we navigated through CPSP Parkway and Lactation Lane, where we reviewed the comprehensive perinatal service program and lactation services when rendered outside of the program. For this segment, segment four, we will continue in our travels and journey through the services and guidelines for two different benefits covered under Medi-Cal, the dyadic benefit and the community health worker benefit. First, we will travel via the dyadic benefit boulevard where we will examine its services and its guidelines. Then we will travel via community health worker benefit boulevard where we will also examine its services and guidelines. Upon the conclusion of this segment, you will walk away knowing what is the dyadic benefit and the community health worker benefit, along with their specified services, eligible providers, eligible clinical settings, and the coding, billing, and documentation guidelines for each, including the current procedural terminology codes, known as CPT codes, and or the codes of the Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System, known as HICS-PICS codes. My goal on this journey is to provide a clear interpretation of both the dyadic benefit and the community health worker benefit to facilitate compliant coding and billing to help your practice maximize revenue for Healthy Steps Aligned Services. So as you can see, we have quite a lot of information to cover. So let's buckle up, place our learning vehicles in drive, and begin our ride on Dyadic Benefit Boulevard. Let us begin with the definition of dyadic services and review the services that fall under the benefit with all applicable guidelines your site will need to successfully render, code, document, and bill for dyadic services. The California Department of Health Services implemented the dyadic benefit on January 1, 2023. It is a benefit designed to treat and support children and their parents or caregivers simultaneously to strengthen this foundational relationship and promote positive parent-child interactions as well as promote prevention and early intervention of services that may be required. Medi-Cal, California's Medicaid healthcare program, will reimburse for specified dyadic services when rendered to patients ages 0 to 20 years of age and or their parents or caregivers, when rendered in an outpatient and medical setting. The services are rendered to either the patient and or the parent or the caregivers of the patient during a child's visit, which is built under the child's Medi-Cal identification number, where a U1 modifier must be appended to the service code. This billing and coding modifier is required to identify the services as dyadic services. Medi-Cal's guidelines for the dyadic benefit are found in the Medi-Cal Non-Specialty Mental Health Services Manual, where provider eligibility to render and bill for the services are shared with the other non-specialty mental health services. According to the guidance found in this manual, licensed clinical social workers, licensed professional clinical counselors, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed psychologists, psychiatric physician assistants, psychiatric nurse practitioners, and psychiatrists can render and bill for dyadic services as long as the services are consistent with the practitioner's training and licensing requirements. The only billing nuance regarding these eligible clinicians is found with licensed clinical counselors. Federally qualified health centers, known as FQHCs, 
and rural health centers, known as RHCs, may not be eligible for reimbursement for the services rendered by a clinical counselor unless they are included in their insurance contract negotiations. Verification with your site's billing department or administrative department should be made on if clinical counselors are recognized for insurance carrier reimbursement. There are four new services that fall under the dyadic benefit, as well as existing services that are recognized for reimbursement. Let us first review the four new services, their billing codes, the description of each service, and the billing nuances. The first of the four new services under the dyadic benefit is the Dyadic Behavioral Health Well-Child Visit. The Dyadic Behavioral Health Well-Child Visit, referred to as the DBH Well-Child Visit, is a visit between the patient and or the parents or the caregivers of the patient and the eligible licensed behavioral health practitioners working under their scope of practice. This visit can occur during the patient's well-child visit or outside of the well-child visit, although it is recommended to be rendered during. If it is rendered outside of the medical well-child visit, Medi-Cal recommends that both visits occur within one week of each other. FQHCs and RHCs, as well as Indian Health Services Memorandum of Agreement, known as IHS MOA clinics and 638 clinics, would not be eligible for the prospective payment system per visit rate for the DBH well-child visit if the visit is rendered outside of the medical well-child visit. So it is important for those clinic types to simultaneously render the DBH well-child visit with the medical well-child visit to obtain reimbursement for the services. So what exactly entails a DBH well-child visit? Well, it is a culmination of services rendered to the patient or the patient and their parents or caregivers for patients ages 0 to 20 years of age when delivered according to the Bright Futures American Academy of Pediatrics Periodicity Schedule or when medically necessary for psychosocial and or behavioral assessments with specific visit component requirements. Let us review those requirements, keeping in mind that the documentation for these visits must reflect the service requirements rendered. The DBH Well Child Visit includes the behavioral health history for the child and parents or caregivers, including a parent or caregiver's interview, addressing the child's temperament, relationship with others, interests, abilities, and caregiver concerns. It also includes a developmental history of the child, a mental status assessment of the parents or caregivers, observations of parents or caregivers' interaction with the child, and screenings for family needs and social determinants of health. Family needs screenings may include tobacco use, substance use, utility and transportation needs, and interpersonal safety, including guns in the home. Social determinants of health screenings may include screenings for poverty, food insecurity, housing instability, access to safe drinking water, and community-level violence. Also included in the DBH Well Child Visit is age-appropriate anticipatory guidance focused on behavioral health promotion and risk factor reduction, which may include educating the parents or the caregivers on how life experiences impact their child's development and their parenting. It may also include education on how their child's life experiences impact their child's development. Also, information and resources to support the child through different stages of development is included. And last of the service components for a DBH Well Child Visit is making essential referrals and connections to community resources as needed. Now that we have reviewed the service components of the DBH Well Child Visit, let us review its billing code and description. H1011 is the billing code for DBH Well Child Visits and its description reads dyadic behavioral health well child visit. And as previously advised, it is to be billed with a U1 modifier, as this is a requirement when billing for all dyadic services. The second of the four new services under the dyadic benefit are dyadic comprehensive community support services. The comprehensive community support service visit is a visit between the patient and or the parents or caregivers of the patient and the eligible licensed behavioral health practitioner working under their scope of practice. The comprehensive community support service visit is geared to help a child and their parents or caregivers gain access to needed medical, social, educational, and other health-related services, such as connection with public and or private assistance, like the welfare program, social services, and behavioral health programs. Medi-Cal provides reimbursement 
for both initial and periodic visits, which include assessment and service plan development, as long as services being rendered are for the benefit of the child. The assessment plan consists of specific medical, social, educational, and other health-related needs identified during either a patient's medical visit, their dyadic behavioral health visit, or other communication between the clinicians and the child and or their parents or caregivers. Just as with DBH well child visits, there are also service component requirements for dyadic comprehensive community support service visits. Let us review those requirements now, remembering that the documentation for these visits must reflect the service requirements rendered. Requirements for these visits include assistance in maintaining, monitoring, and modifying any of the medical, social, educational, or other health-related needs identified for the patient and family, including assistance in finding and connecting to those necessary resources, either via brief telephone calls or face-to-face -face interaction. These visits also include communication and coordination of care with the patient's family, medical providers, dental health care providers, community resources, and other involved supports, including education, social, judicial, community, and other state agencies. Also included in these visits is outreach and follow-up for crisis, missed appointments, and any other activities to address the dyad's identified treatment and or support needs. Now that we have reviewed the service components for dyadic comprehensive community support service visits, let us review its billing code and description. H2015 is the billing code for these visits and its description reads, Dyadic Comprehensive Community Support Services. It is to be billed with a U1 modifier as all dyadic services are, and the documentation for these visits should contain information regarding the required service components reviewed. In addition, the Comprehensive Community Support Service visit, unlike the DBH Well Child visit, is a time-based service indicating that each unit of service billed for has a required time limitation. Each billable unit for a comprehensive community support service visit is for the reporting of 15 minutes of service, indicating that if you bill for one unit of service, you are reporting that the clinician spent 15 minutes with the patient and or parents or caregivers rendering support services. If the clinician spends 30 minutes with the patient and or parents or caregivers, then two units of service must be billed. How to report more than one unit of service depends on your billing system and should be verified with your site's billing department or administrative department. And because this is a time-based service, clinicians must make certain to include the time spent rendering the service in their documentation. When calculating the time, clinicians must not include any time spent outside of rendering the components of dyadic comprehensive community support services, as billing for a time-based service can only include the time spent rendering the components requirements of the services being billed. Let us now move on to the third of the fourth new services under the dyadic benefit, which are dyadic family training and counseling for child development visits. Just as with the previous two new dyadic services reviewed, the dyadic family training and counseling for child development visit is a visit between the patient and or the parents or caregivers of the patient and the eligible licensed behavioral health practitioners working under their scope of practice. These visits are geared in assisting, training, and counseling patients and or their families for the patient's behavioral issues, developmentally appropriate parenting strategies, parent-child interactions, and any related issues. Medi-Cal provides reimbursement for both initial and periodic family training and counseling for child development when provided to the child and our parents or caregivers. And as with all dyadic services, there are also service components for these visits. Let us review those now. Service components include providing information and counseling on a patient's behavioral issues, including providing developmentally appropriate parenting strategies and strategies for any parent-child interaction issues. The documentation for these visits should contain components such as information regarding the patient's behavioral issues, the developmentally appropriate parenting strategies offered to the parents or caregivers, any parent-child interaction issues, if pertinent, and the counseling provided to the family. In addition, just as seen with the comprehensive community support service visit, family training and counseling for child development visits are also time-based, indicating that each unit of service billed for has a required time limitation. Each billable unit for this visit 
is for 15 minutes of service, indicating that if you bill for one unit of service, you are reporting that the clinician spent 15 minutes with the patient and or parents or caregivers, rendering family training and counseling for child development. And as seen with the comprehensive community support service visit, if the clinician spends 30 minutes with the patient and or parents or caregivers rendering family training and counseling for child development, then two units of service should be billed. How to report more than one unit of service depends on your billing system and should be verified with your site's billing department or administrative department. And because this is a time-based service, clinicians must make certain to take the time to document that it took to spend rendering the services. The billing code for these visits is T1027. And just as with all dyadic services, it too must be billed with a U1 modifier. This now brings us to the fourth and final new service under the dyadic benefit, which is dyadic psychoeducational services. As with the previously three new dyadic services we just reviewed, dyadic psychosocial educational service visits are visits between the patient and or parents or caregivers of the patient and the eligible licensed behavioral health practitioner working under the scope of practice. These visits are planned and structured interventions with the goal of either preventing the development of a behavioral health condition or the worsening of a condition with the goal of achieving optimal mental health and long-term resilience. Medi-Cal does not provide specified guidance on structured intervention services Therefore, clinical judgment should be practiced, but I recommend verifying with Medi-Cal and other insurance carriers on if there are specific service component requirements and or guidance on the structure recommended for the intervention services. Medi-Cal provides reimbursement for both initial and periodic psychoeducational services when provided to the child and our parents or caregivers. Documentation requirements should entail the identification of the behavioral health condition the services were aimed at preventing or worsening with the structured intervention services rendered to either prevent the behavioral health condition altogether or to prevent the condition from worsening. H2027 is the billing code that represents these services. And just as with all dyadic services, it too must be billed with a U1 modifier. In addition, just as seen with comprehensive community support service visits and family training and counseling for child development visits, dyadic psychoeducational service visits are also time-based, indicating that each unit of service billed for has a required time limitation. Each billable unit for these visits is for the reporting of 15 minutes of service indicating that if you bill for one unit of service, you are reporting that the clinician spent 15 minutes rendering these services. And as seen when reviewing the other new dyadic services, if the clinician spends 30 minutes rendering services to the patient and or parents or caregivers, then two units of services must be billed. And if the clinician spends 45 minutes rendering services, then three units of service should be billed for. How to report more than one unit of service depends on your billing system and should be verified with your site's billing department or administrative department. This concludes our review of the four new dyadic services under the dyadic benefit, but it only gets better from here. The dyadic benefit also includes the reimbursement of specified existing services that are now eligible for reimbursement when provided to a child's parent, parents, or legal guardians when the services are furnished during a child's visit, where the services are billed under the child's Medi-Cal identification number, as long as they are rendered for the benefit of the child. These services are known as dyadic caregiver services. Dyadic caregiver services, just as with the four new dyadic services, requires that a U1 modifier be appended to the service billing codes upon medical claim submission. So what are these existing services that are now recognized for Medi-Cal reimbursement under the dyadic care benefit? Let's review them now. To start, you have psychiatric diagnostic evaluations reported with billing code 90791. You also have screenings for depression, either documented with a positive result, reported with code G8431 or G8510 for those documented with a negative result. Also, family psychotherapy, either with or without the patient present, billed with CPT codes 90846 and 90847, and multiple family group therapy billed with CPT code 90849, 
Likewise, individual psychotherapy services, either with or without evaluation and management services for 30, 45, and 60 minute sessions utilizing CPT codes 90832 through 90838 are recognized as dyadic caregiver services. In addition to family, multifamily group and individual therapy services, psychotherapy for crisis is also recognized as a dyadic caregiver service utilizing CPT codes 90839 and 90840 for billing. What's more, health and behavior assessments or reassessments and health and behavior family intervention services also fall under the existing services Medi-Cal recognizes under the dyadic benefit as dyadic caregiver services. Health and behavior assessments or reassessments and interventions utilize CPT codes 96156 as well as 96167 through 96171 for the reimbursement of services. Dyadic caregiver services also include ACE screenings, either when the parent or caregiver score reflects the parent or caregiver to be at high risk or at low risk, utilizing codes G9919 and G9920 for billing and reporting. Also, smoking and tobacco use cessation counseling for either a three to 10 minute counseling session or for those that last more than 10 minutes is included in these services and they are billed with CPT codes 99406 and 99407. And last of these 16 services that are recognized under the dyadic benefit as dyadic caregiver services are brief emotional behavioral assessments with scoring and documentation per standardized instrument billed with CPT code 96127. Regarding the coding, billing, and documentation guidelines for these services, Medi-Cal advises that their existing guidelines are not subject to change even when rendered as a dyadic caregiver service. The compliant billing, coding, and documentation practices for all of these services were examined in both segment one and two of the review of the billing and coding guide, where the information can also be found in the coding and billing guide itself. All service guidelines, including the frequency limitations, remain the same. Therefore, following all previously examined guidelines would still apply. And this, fellow travelers, concludes our journey via the Dyadic Benefit Boulevard, which brings us to our next and final journey of boulevards, the Community Health Worker Benefit. 